I think this is uh, this is quite unique in the terms of how quickly this has happened. You know, as as my colleague from World Vision just said, you know, in the la in the course of uh, just seven days now, you have one million people who have left the country, and and there are obvious needs that they have on the border. Um, but I think it is also important to rem remember in all of this that there are so many more people who are still stuck inside uh, inside Ukraine along the front lines in active combat zones. And their needs are even greater. They need protection. They are running out of food. They are running out of uh, of water. And this is what we're we're hearing very concerning reports from people in those situations, including our own staff who are now hiding in bomb bomb shelters and and are not able to get out. And the situation is really quite precarious. And we need to make sure that we remember about them as well. Yeah, that is such an important point. I mean, earlier we heard from our reporter that the city of Mariupol has been completely flattened by the Russians and that there is no water, there's no power, it's in the middle of winter, there's dwindling food supplies. Is there any possibility that help can be gotten to those people? I think the only thing that really will help now is this is hostility that, that all parties hold hostilities and allow us to to get in uh, with humanitarian assistance. Um, it is an incredibly chaotic and fluid and difficult situation that we're now putting in place. Our response plan. We have staff uh, across the country, but until there is more stability and predictability and a cessation of hostilities, it will be extremely difficult to to get that aid to the people who, who really need it. There are calls uh, from the UN for green corridors to be established. How critical is that in any sort of theatre of war that we're experiencing now? I think it is incredibly critical in in many situ in many similar situations like that like this. You have to remember that you, you know there are fluid front lines here, and you know just before the war as well, there were about two million people living along the front lines, what used to be the old front lines of the conflict from back in 2014, and those are you know a population that you know we're not able to get to at the moment. I think another really important aspect to this war, which is something that I saw personally in 2014 and 2015, is the use of weapons that cannot and the document-based um, area weapons that will kill and injure civilians. Now, UN has confirmed its numbers that more than 200 civilians have been killed. The, the real number is likely much higher, and we're going to see that on, increase again unless we see a cessation of hostilities. Yeah. Uh, well, let's, let's come back to then the, 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 the people flooding out. I mean, what kind of operation has to happen to give assistance to those nations who have been kind of overwhelmed with the numbers pouring into their countries? I mean, well, first of all, I think we have to acknowledge that what we have seen from all the neighboring countries and the populations, the people in those countries, and tremendous outpouring of support and sympathy and help. So, so there are kind of very functioning uh, systems in place to receive many of those. But as you say, those systems will get overwhelmed. So the Norwegian Refugee Council as well, just like World Vision, we have assessment teams on the ground in Poland and in Romania and Moldova. There are obvious needs here. People need shelter, they need blankets, they need food, um, and they need to be able to have sort of medium-term solutions that where they can be in, in safety. And we see trends of, of support also from doing up that, uh, those operations and to help uh, people in that situation. Mm. And then what happens if it becomes a much, a, a, you're talking medium term, short to medium term, but what happens if this becomes a long drawn out conflict? Well, that is often the big challenge in, in situations like this, situations of conflict. Um, it is... Uh, we've gotten good as a humanitarian sector and as a world community to address some of the immediate concerns, immediate needs in these situations. Uh, we are less 
good at finding durable solutions for people, whether that is ensuring safe and dignified return, whether it is to ensure local integration or resettlement. And here it's clear that, you know, the Europe as a community needs to take sort of joint responsibility, common responsibility for that. At the same time, we need to make sure that we um, keep our eye on the ball and make sure to work as hard as we can to bring an end to this conflict. Well, I so appreciate your, uh, you joining us and taking the time. Thank you so much.